Oh, all right, everybody. Welcome back to the Reaver Pro channel. Today, we're talking about backpack guns, if they're useful, their feasibility, maybe some situations to use them in. Oftentimes when backpack guns get brought up, it's when they're going into a situation where maybe they want a little bit more heat on them. I know in 2020, there was a lot of those mostly peaceful protests. Uh, it is not generally speaking unruly. <laughs> In those types of situations, you might want to have a little bit of extra protection on you. I know we all might have some sort of concealed carry of one type or another, but sometimes having a rifle or something with a little bit more power and capability is going to be an improvement on just your typical handgun, especially in a much more intense scenario. With these backpack guns, a lot of the time it is a balance between weight and concealability. That means what type of backpack you're wearing, because if you're walking around with a large duffel bag everywhere, that's going to raise a lot of eyebrows. But if you just have like a, a regular everyday Jans board or something like that, and you've got something small and compact that you can hide within it, then that's not going to turn any heads. So funny that balance is important. If you're looking more for like EDCing some sort of rifle, because that's just the type of person you are, first off, you know, right on, kudos, make sure you're being smart about that. We'll touch on some things later. However, if you're planning on concealed carrying this backpack gun and still utilizing the backpack for whatever everyday purpose you have, if you're just going to be EDCing it because you're in a rough neighborhood, or in a, and that's just what you want to do, uh, something to keep in mind is the size. Anyway, so with the size, oftentimes putting a short barrel AR into your backpack that is going to take up the entire backpack. If you put some sort of law folding stock onto it as well, then that usually gets pretty thick. And so if that's what you're running, just understand that you probably won't be able to utilize your backpack for anything other than that. If that's its only purpose, that's fine. However, when I was setting up a backpack gun, I wanted something that I could be able to throw into a backpack and still utilize my backpack for whatever EDC items I had. What else do I keep in my EDC bag? Well, I'm glad you asked. I keep a Wendy's $7 biggie bag. No sauce? No Chick-fil-A sauce? Fuck. If it's a laptop, if it's just some first aid, whatever your purposes are, then having something smaller is gonna make sure that you're actually able to work it. And oftentimes it's gonna be a little less cumbersome to take around with you everywhere. Don't worry, buddy. You're doing fine. I won't let you blow this. <laughs> If you are planning to have some sort of backpack carry, even it doesn't matter what type it is, even if it's just an off-body carry, that's how you carry your pistol, something to be very, very concerned about is the fact that you can't put your backpack down anywhere. You can't just be sitting your gun down in your office or something like that. You need to be very smart with how you handle that, that backpack carry or that off carry. Maybe in a situation you've got a locked cabinet that you can throw your bag and gun into, and then that's behind another locked door. Before, if you're in some sort of office building, that's something to consider. I can't can't really give you the advice on that. My advice is keep it with you at all times. However, if that's what you go, just remember that you're probably not the only one with a key to your office. If there's janitors or custodials, uh, you don't want to be leaving that around. And even if you just maybe you're in a rush that day or you go to a meeting and, and you leave your bag there, then you left your gun in your office or a rifle in your office. That's a pretty scary thing. An argument against a backpack gun would be something along the lines of, well, I have a gun in my car. I will, I will keep my rifle in my car. And honestly, like I can see that being, being an option. However, if you ever have to abandon your vehicle for whatever reason, are you able to leave your gun in there? That's probably not something you want to do. Once again, referencing the riots of 2020, there's a lot of times when vehicles got stopped in cities and they were not able to go anywhere and people just left their cars places. If you needed some extra protection, you wanted to bring that with you in that type of situation, then you've got the two options. One, you leave it in the car, you probably don't want to do that. Or two, you bring it with you because you want that extra protection, but if you've been fitting in your car, but it can't fit into a backpack, then that's gonna leave you with a pretty complicated scenario because it's not like you can take your rifle out, throw the sling on over, and then start walking through a riot with a rifle strapped across your body. You don't want that. So having something smaller, more concealable, or at least a way to do that is gonna be very, very important. If you have a truck gun or something like that, maybe consider carrying a duffel bag or something that could fit it in. Something that you could also do is if it's something like an AR, you can go ahead and disassemble it, pull off the upper from the lower and make it a lot more concealable. Just make sure that you have a bag to put it in. That way you have a way to transport it without it drawing any eyes. Even if it's just a duffel bag or something like that, it's better than leaving the rifle in your car. So in any of these types of high threat situations, it pays dividends to have something that's very 
easily concealable. There's a lot of different arguments on what is the best concealed carry rifle or concealed carry weapon for like a backpack gun, but that is ultimately going to be up to you. It is always the balance between concealability and firepower. I have really erred on the side of concealability and I ended up getting a flux raider. We'll jump into weapons in a little bit, but that is the, the real big trade-off when you're setting it up. Weapon setup. Oftentimes, probably the most common option is going to be some sort of short barrel AR. And these are good options. However, you really, really have to have a pretty short and compact package. And even then, if you throw it into a backpack, I've seen a lot where they look a little bulky or they are a little bit longer than the backpack, so that barrel is stretching it out. That is absolutely something to be keeping in mind. Uh, as far as what I have, I don't want my backpack looking like bulky or anything like this. Hey guys, Editor Reaver here. Dumbass Reaver forgot to tell you what kind of backpack this was. This is a Hazard 4 Sling Messenger bag, which is unfortunately discontinued. However, Hazard 4 has a lot of great bags. This, I, I think, looks pretty streamlined. It's black and maybe a little tactical, but it looks like a, a pretty standard messenger bag. You can select whatever backpack you feel like is the most low profile or provides the features that you're looking for. I selected a Flux Raider. That was specifically why I built this gun. I wanted to have something small and compact that I could easily throw into a backpack. It would not change anything about how I'm carrying my backpack or, or what my EDC or what my daily carry looks like. It's really easy. This is great because it fits right into the laptop sleeve. And so it's got a lot of padding. It's not gonna be bumping around on stuff. If you got a laptop in there as well, it's not gonna be clanking around to it. And like I said, it does not add any size to the backpack and it doesn't really seem to like print in in its own way so that's why i ended up going with it with a flux raider the big argument with the flux raider or any sort of pistol caliber carbine is well then i got my handgun why would i bring a essentially a second handgun to this type of situation and there's a lot of truth to that because it is still firing some sort of nine millimeter round in, in this case which is the same as my edc however with this deployable sock it does not add any extra girth to it girth, uh, when you have those law folders, oftentimes it makes it a lot wider. And so it makes it a little bit harder to conceal. This stock really, this brace really just slides within itself and does not add any extra bulk. By having this brace on here, it makes the skill floor substantially lower. Firing and hitting something at 50 yards, if you're proficient, most people can do that. However, in a lot of uh, high stress situations, you're kind of moving around, this is going to be substantially easier. If you were to say, give somebody a pistol, tell them to hit a man-sized target at 50 yards, they're probably going to struggle. However, if you give them something like this, where they've got a little bit more points of contact, they don't have to so much worry about the trigger pull, then they're they're going to be much more consistent with landing those hits. I wanted to make sure my skill floor was as low as possible because this does add a lot of value to the situation. It is still nine millimeter. However, throwing in some plus B hollow points is going to make this a bit of a beast. Damn boy, he's thick. However, that is his limitation. You've got way more concealability, but you do lack some of that firepower. So as far as pistol chassis are concerned, if you are going into that direction, there's a lot of different kinds. There's just so many different types. They're usually pretty affordable. They fit a lot of common pistols like a Glock 19, so it's pretty easy to do. However, I think the Flux Raider is the best as far as the capability that it provides. One thing that I really like about it is that it holds a spare mag onto the pistol. So it makes mag exchanges very quick. You always have that extra ammo in there and it's not too bulky, it's not too long. Next is it has the deployable stock that does not take any extra space as if it was folded. Most pistol chassis they, their stock just folds or their brace folds into it and that's going to make it a lot wider. This does not add any extra girth. It can also be fired without any, any obstructions or anything like that uh, from a stock collapse situation. And it also enables you to put a full on optic onto here. So there's a lot of value to it. However, it may not be the perfect solution for you. So I'd love to hear what kind of chassis that you're running in maybe this type of situation. If you're wanting something with a lot more firepower, but also the smallest frame possible, probably some sort of 300 blackout, like 6.5 inch barrel build is going to provide the best power for that sort of setup. That is because a 300 blackout excels far better than some sort of 5.56 round out of an extremely short barrel. Either way, when setting up your rifle or whatever you're carrying, 
it's best to keep the sides clear and try to remove as many snags as possible. Now that's not absolutely possible in, in every single facet because there's gonna be optics and things like that, but you wanna remove them as, as much as possible. Anything on the side you'll probably want to remove. So if you have say a flashlight on it, maybe consider putting it onto the bottom rail or the top rail. That way it removes some snag hazards and the thickness of your rifle, while it may not be the most ideal for getting light out there, it does increase the concealability. So definitely something to keep in mind. Next is the magazines that go with it. It's probably gonna be easier to conceal if you have some sort of smaller capacity magazine in your rifle or your pistol caliber carbine, maybe like a 10 or a 20, and then have in your bag maybe some 20s, some 30s, whatever you feel like you can conceal pretty easily. That way it's a lot easier to conceal when you're trying to pull it out of your bag, your magazine is not catching on a strap or something like that, so it makes deploying it a little bit easier. Fast deployment for these type of situations is definitely something you absolutely have to practice because oftentimes it's not as easy as just drawing it from like a holster or, or pulling it out from a sling. There's always going to be the argument as well as most engagements are going to be taking place within three to seven meters. That is the most common self-defense situation. I still don't know if EDCing a rifle is the right choice. That is gonna be up to you in your certain scenario. However, there are plenty of cases where those engagement distances have been far longer than that. If you look up Elijah Dickens about one or two years ago, uh, he took out a mall shooter uh, from about 45 meters away in a food court. And I can tell you, um, he did it with his handgun, competent dude, hell yeah. But if I was in that type of situation, I would really appreciate having, say, this flux rate or some sort of rifle in order to do that because I can be a lot more confident in my shots because it's just easier to be accurate when you have a stock, you have a rifle, of some sorts because it's easier to brace. That's just how it is. You shoot better with, with a stock rifle. That's it, It's easier. It's, it's like playing on easy mode. Anyway, you're going to be responsible for all the rounds that you send flying. Started blasting. Bah, bah. Wow. And so it's going to be very critical that you aren't sending errant rounds flying around. You want to be as precise and as accurate as possible and take out the threat as quickly as possible. So why not take any advantage that you can? So what else do I keep in my EDC bag? Well, deep in the very bottom, you'll find my virginity. Now, you don't have to follow my advice on how I've got mine set up. You should pick something that works best for you in the situation that you find yourself in. For me, I really think the Flux Raider or some sort of pistol chassis is gonna be the best option for me because it's got maximum concealability but something different might work better for you. If you don't wanna conceal carry it, then that, that's fine. This is not a video saying that you need to do that. However, with whatever setup that you have, make sure it's, you're being realistic with it. And if it is something you are doing, make sure you're practicing with it. Uh, you're running around. Mm. Refreshing. You're, you're making sure that, that the rifle isn't clocking around or it's not going to rip through your bag. Whatever it might be, you're practicing doing that. That way, if the time ever comes for it, you are competent. It's not always as fun and it is high speed, you know, practicing pulling it out of a backpack and things like that. But as far as backpacks are concerned, I, I really like sling bags. Once again, it kind of gives you those mall ninja vibes whatever, I really like them. In these types of situations, it's pretty great because you can just undo the strap and then bring it around and you've got everything you need in front of you. So it's pretty quick deployment and you've just got everything right here instead of maybe pulling off a two strap backpack sitting on the floor or holding it, trying to pull it out. When setting up a backpack rifle, make sure you're putting medical and things like that in there, maybe some spare mags. That's gonna be something that's very, very critical for whatever you're doing. Because if you're deploying some sort of backpack rifle, it's probably gonna be in a pretty bad situation. So having medical, spare mags, things like that is going to pay dividends in the end if you ever have to use this in some sort of self-defense scenario. As far as some extra goodies in this type of situation that you might wanna consider putting into your backpack because you are prepping for some sort of more high-risk situation that we may experience here, in the civilian world, then you might want to outfit it with maybe some extra goodies. How I've got mine set up, and this is by no means perfect, fucking own class. This backpack comes up, uh, we've got some spare mags. If I was to say be carrying a rifle of some kind, I would have a spare mag here, makes it really easy to draw. Not only can I access it by flipping this up, but the zipper on top enables me to access the main pouch as well as whatever is on the front of that pouch right there. It makes it a really, really cool setup. So if you need to access it a little quicker, undo the buckles, but if you wanna do it a little bit more covert, then you can just reach to the top. I've got some flashbangs, rifle magazine. If I was running a rifle, I'm not, but this is a setup just maybe for you. A spare pistol mag and uh, a knife of some kind. You can also go ahead and consider some sort of tear gas grenade, plenty of medical, tourniquets. That's not a tourniquet. 
tourniquets, bandages, quick clot, anything that you would need in that type of situation. If you are maybe prepping it because it's you're going into a pretty dangerous area, there's been some stuff going on, like I said, reference to 2020 riots, then you might be able to put in maybe some soft body armor into the backpack. There's a slot available within this backpack that takes maps, but you can also just slide in a like a, a level 3A soft body armor into there as well. It's not set up completely ideal uh, as far as body armor placement is concerned, but it's better than nothing. If you're deploying it and you've got something in front of you, then it's going to give you a little bit of extra protection. If you've got that full on backpack, then maybe you just put the backpack back on backwards and that's how you run it do whatever you want but that might be something to keep in mind and that level 3a soft armor is going to be very concealable it's not going to add a lot of weight but it will give you a lot of protection it's not going to give you any protection against rifle rounds of course but you know some protection is better than none. Now, there are a lot of nuances to this conversation. If you're in a type of area where snatch and grabs are extremely common, someone referenced Chicago in a conversation that I was a part of where snatch and grab crimes are very, very common, then maybe having some sort of backpack gun isn't a good situation because if you're walking around, you've got a backpack on and it gets snatched right from you and they just run off with your rifle, that's a pretty bad situation as opposed to if they just took it and they've got your laptop and things in it because now they have, they're running away with a rifle. That's bad news, okay? We don't want that. So if you are gonna be carrying it in those types of situations, having a backpack with some clasp systems in order to provide a little bit of extra security. But once again, I can't make these decisions for you. It is for you to decide. If it's not safe to do so, then having some sort of on-body carry, something concealed, is gonna be a much better option. Whatever you choose to do, just make sure that you're proficient with it, practice those reps, and then have a nice, good setup. So if you ever have to do it, you are confident and proficient with what you're doing. If you're the type of person that you have a backpack carry and you've got a setup that works really well, go ahead and drop that into the comments. I'd love to hear that. We can all learn from each other. If you don't like the idea of backpack carry, don't do it. If you're not comfortable with it, don't do it. Now, I'm not the end all be all wizard of knowledge. You're a wizard, Harry. I am some idiot on the internet LARPing in the wilderness with red sunglasses on. If you backpack carry of some kind, you have to subscribe. My mom said so. We still have time for comment of the week. Ooh. This week's comment was brought to you by this guy. And his comment is, I forgot what the comment was. If Mountain Dew Code Red was a person. You know, this really strikes me down to my soul because I really hope to be like a pitch black kind of guy code red tastes like cherry and that's that's definitely a, a bit of a letdown however it was the most liked comment on that video with 23 likes so people agree and i just have to accept it i am renaming my channel to the code red bro see ya i may not shoot like a rock star but i definitely drink it this video is sponsored by rockstar it's actually not it's always people to ruin my perfect shot my perfect take because i do everything so perfectly <laughs> <laughs> anyway, a side thought though, if you think that they should bring Mountain Dew Pitch Black back and maybe get rid of Code Red, go ahead and hit that subscribe button because you are my people. Pitch Black is drastically underrated. There's a, another car going by. Go on, drive by. So what is the most important thing that you should carry in your EDC bag? Well, that's you who my friend.